Welcome back to Mimi's house today. And you can see no grandkids, they're back at school, but I will have them over tonight because I'm doing a really fun meal for you today. I'm fixing one of my favorite things, chili. Love, love our chili. And you know what? I don't ever fix chili throughout the year until it turns fall. On a cold, cloudy day, there's nothing better than a good pot of soup. And chili is one of my favorite. And then we're gonna do our homemade pimento cheese. And this recipe has been handed down for, from my grandmother to my, mom, to my mom and to me. And I have a special story that we're gonna tell about how we started out doing our pimento cheese at the restaurant. And then at the end, one of my favorite and fun things to do is our caramel and chocolate apples. And so that's gonna be really, really fun. Let's come over here. I do want to get my hamburger started. So we're going to put our hamburger and we're going to let that cook and then we'll go back to our pimento cheese. So I haven't really shredded this. I don't want it to be fine. I like it to have some good hamburger chunks in my chili. So we're going to put this in our good old iron skillet. And I've got some good ground beef chuck in this. Oh, we're gonna, and one thing I like to do with my hamburger is I like to go ahead and add some of my chili powder because I really want my beef uh, to be seasoned when I bite into that big chunk of hamburger. So I'm gonna add lots of my chili powder just to seize, it's like seasoning it. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of pepper. And of course my salt. And I like for my onions to be really tender, so we're gonna go ahead and add the onions too, so they can cook into that beef too. All right. All right, so got that going. And we'll come back over here and just keep turning it as we go. But right now, while this is cooking, let's get started on my famous pimento cheese. So first of all, let me tell you this story about my pimento cheese. When we started doing pimento cheese at the restaurant, well, uh, this is my grandmother, Mammy's cheese grater. Then my mom had it, and then it was handed down to me. And so we used it and used it. It was rusty. I had to clean it every time I used it. And then it finally broke on me, and I refused to make pimento cheese ever again because I couldn't find this kind of grater. So anyway, I lost it. It, would, it just disappeared. I mean, I was trying to still use it. Uh, I lost it, and I'm like, I can't do it. I just cannot find that cheese grater for the pimento cheese that my mom and my mammy always made. So anyway, at Christmas time, one of my dear friends and one of the best cooks at Mammy's Kitchen, Jennifer, when we had our employee party, she presented this to me. So she took it and she had it framed with the pimento cheese recipe and some letters that my mom had written, me and my brother and my sister, uh, in a family cookbook and she put it all in a frame for me. It was just one of the best gifts that I had ever received. So I did eventually find a new cheese grater and we did put pimento cheese back on our menu. And it really is one of the most popular uh, items on our menu. We do all kinds of things with this pimento cheese. I remember growing up, we would have to, this time of year, we would have to strip tobacco. My dad, we'd, he'd come home from GE, my uncle Clellan, Aunt Marilyn, and we'd all have to go. And we hated it, hated it, hated it. If you ever had to go strip tobacco, you know how bad it was, and I always had to do the tips. And I always got in trouble because I couldn't get my rolls big enough. But my mom would always make pimento cheese sandwiches and chili to take to uh, the tobacco barn, and that's what we got to eat. So that was the best part 
of the whole deal. And then we would all, me, my brother, me, my Marty, and Lisa would get a hundred bucks for stripping tobacco, we just thought we were wet rich. And so that was so exciting for us. All right, so I've got my grated cheese and we use Velveeta. You can use any kind of cheese you like, but you can't beat this Velveeta taste, the creaminess of it. And we also shred pepper jack. So we're gonna put a little bit of that in there. All right, we'll see how that works and these beautiful red pimentos. And that just gives it that really, that white, orange, and red color. It's really a pretty dish too. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of sugar. And I guess when you're a country cook, you always just put sugar in everything. It's like putting salt in your sweets. You have to put sugar in your savory and it brings both flavors out. And get some salt and pepper. And you don't wanna to add too much salt. You already got the saltiness of the cheeses, but I do like the pepper on it. And I'm trying to stay away so I'm not gonna sneeze. And then last, we're gonna add some mayo. And I wanna get a fork. Because I don't want to smush the cheeses up, which have a tendency to do. You just want to toss that in there and see. That's really, really pretty. A little bit more. When we make this at the restaurant now, we of course make it in huge tubs. And every, you could put pimento cheese on anything. That looks really, really good. And there you go, Mammy's pimento cheese. And we're gonna go back over here, start working on our chili. So come on over. So this is looking really, really good. And I'm only just trying to stir in those onions really, really well. And like I said, I don't wanna chop it up too much. I want some good old chunks of meat in my chili. And it smells so good too. So, I'm cooking it in this iron skillet. Mm -mm. That looks delicious. I'm about the only person I know that likes spaghetti in my chili. Why I started out doing that, I don't know. But, maybe as a filler. But anyway, we are gonna start our spaghetti. And I don't put a lot. And you don't have to add it if you don't want to. But I do break it up, because I don't want you to have to twirl. It's not spaghetti, it's in chili. So I break it up to where it's small. I remember Mama Jean, I think, did macaroni in her chili. And I've always just done this. So we want that on high. So it's not a lot, it's just gonna fill in and give you an extra texture uh, in your chili. I like it. Okay, so while our hamburger and our noodles are going, we're gonna start our pot of sauces. And I'm so, so excited. This is gonna be the best chili ever because I have homemade canned tomato juice from my son, the bossy one, at the restaurant who lives in the, at the home place in Gravel Switch. He bought my mom's farm, so it's been in the family for over a hundred years. And he is the biggest gardener ever. So we've got, I've got ch uh, tomatoes, I've got tomato sauce, tomato juice. And so I'm so excited. So we're gonna use all of them. And that's kind of sad because I think this is all he has. I do you want to put the tomatoes in there. Let's 
seal. Okay, got some chunks of tomatoes. Mm-mm, good. Yeah. It's going to be the best chili ever. Mm. And you know what? My chili's good as soon as you make it. But any time you make chili, it's always better the second day. One more. It's the last one. Till this time next year. So let's get that kind of stirred in there. And then right here I have some tomato sauce just for chili. And you can find it at any grocery. But I like it because of the thickness that it gives your chili. And then I've got some diced tomatoes with some green chili mild peppers. Not a lot, just not too spicy, but just a little bit of a mild flavor. Gives a little bit of a kick. So we're gonna pour some of this in here. And always make sure you save room for your ground beef. I think that's good. We can always add if we have room left. You see that those dark spices and some of those chunks of tomatoes. Wow, that's gonna be really, really good. And then I've got some mild chili beans. And it's also for made just for chili. So it's got also got a a lot of seasonings in it. So there you go. There. Stir that in. I'm going to add some pepper. A little bit of salt. You got enough seasonings in there already. And then again, my favorite is lots of chili powder. So we're going to let this simmer while this finishes cooking in our spaghetti. And then when that's done, we'll put it all together and let it simmer for a couple of hours. And it'll be perfect just in time for dinner. We got a few more minutes while our hamburger is cooking. Our sauce is getting ready to simmer. Our noodles are just about done. So I've got something I want to show you. All oh, my ghouls and goblins and witches and some of my aprons. I've never ever seen any of my grandmothers not wear an apron. So they are one of my favorite things. That was their attire. They had good aprons and then they had everyday aprons. I've worn them at the restaurant and now I'm making my own apron, so you'll never see me at the restaurant without a special apron on. So let's go on outside while this is all cooking. So these are some of the aprons that I've started making uh, when I'm not cooking at Mammy's Kitchen. So I'm pretty proud of them. And it's the only thing that I can really sew right now. So uh, from now on, I'll be trying to make some aprons for each and every show, just to show off for my aunts who always who taught me how to sew. And I remember aunt, uh, my Aunt Juanita, she's the oldest of 17 children. And she taught me, I remember when I was a little girl, my mom was, uh, my mom was sick, so I got to go stay with Aunt Juanita, and she taught me how to quilt a quilt. And I still remember that, and I'll never forget it. So I have some of the greatest aunts ever. So that was on my mom's side. So anyway, my, on the, my dad's side, we come from a family that loves to scare children. For some reason, 
We were scared when we were little. We scare our children. It might be seem mean, but we just like to scare the heck out of people. And we got it. I remember staying at Mammy Clyde's and Pawpaw's house, which was really, really old. So you went up the tiny steps and you had just one big upstairs room. On the left side of the room, our uncle, Brother Dave, he was the youngest of 15. He slept on that side. He got that whole side. On the other side was my, our Aunt Byrne, the best aunt ever. I mean, we were there on weekends, all during the summer, and Aunt Byrne lived there, and she would tell us, we had, she had one side, and when all of us grandkids would stay all night there, we'd have our cots and sleeping on the floor and getting in the bed with her. I don't see how she did it. And she would tell us ghost stories all night. Even if we were on the floor with our blankets, by the time she finished with all those stories, we were in bed with her. And I remember one story. There was this old house across down the road and it was empty and it was across the creek and every time you walked by that house you'd be scared to death. You just knew that ghosts were in there but we never were brave enough to go in this house. And then Aunt Bird would always tell us these stories about the golden arm. And I cannot, if anybody out there remembers the golden arm story, please call me at the restaurant and tell me the whole story. But I just remember at the end she'd say, who stole my golden arm? Who stole my golden arm? And we would all be little and just looking like, oh my gosh, we were scared to death. And she'd go, who? Hey, you stole my golden arm. And we'd scream and then Papa would yell at us. And then we went to bed scared to death. But those are the greatest memories ever. Just loved, loved being in Bradfordsville had the best, best cousins ever. All my cousins, Mike, Kevin, Greg, Lisa, Vera, so many of us, we would be on the steps and we'd have our own little band going. And of course, I always wanted to be the star and they would never let me, but I just knew I could sing. And we would sing this song, Sugar, Sugar, uh-uh, uh-uh, oh, honey, honey, uh-uh, uh-uh, you are my candy girl. <laughs> the best time ever. <laughs> it was fun. If you always had the best cousins ever, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. We would go on the rolling hills, and our toy guns would be tobacco sticks, and we would have the best time ever. We took off walking down, you know, we were on the beach, and so we had so many trails and places to go in the woods. You had the knobs, you had the hills, you had so many things to get into. And I remember one time Papa was in charge of us and he was old always had his coveralls on and he finally found us and it was all big group of us and he had his cane and he was trying to catch us and we were running from him and you know i look back and i bet he just wanted to spank us all really really bad but we literally when we would be at in our uh when we would be at bradfordsville we would eat breakfast leave go everywhere, go up the knobs, get in the creeks. We were just gone all day long. Came back at dinner time and was ready to go. And we begged and cried and pleaded to stay all night, one more night with each other. It was really the best times of my life. So I'm glad that you're letting me share them with you. I know you all have great, great memories like that too. So now let's get back. It's time to get the chili all together. Let's go back over here. All right, so I've drained my beef and it is ready to put in here and so is my spaghetti noodles. So put that right there. Try not to do this without making a mess. And that looks really good and seasoned. Get it all in our pot. Oh my, that looks so good. Oh, and it smells delicious. Put some of our noodles in here. Let's 
So they're a perfect bite size. So you don't think you're eating spaghetti. Get in there. There we go. Oh, smells wonderful. It's gonna be so good, I cannot wait to eat this. There we go, just stir in those noodles really good. And the chunks of hamburger and all those seasonings. Cannot take, wait to take a bite of that tomato. Now my favorite part, my fun part, while we're gonna put this on low, let it simmer, and then we're gonna do some desserts. My favorite thing, I do it every year, I've been doing it for 12 years at the restaurant, are candied apples. And I think that's so much fun. They're so good, so pretty for the fall. It's a perfect fall dessert with all your apples and stuff. So come on over here and let's have some fun. All right, so here we go. Let's see if we can do this. And I've got caramel, chocolate, and a white chocolate. And I've got all my little dressings. I've got Butterfinger. I've got Heath Bar. I've got little itty bitty peanut butter m and -Ms. I've got pumpkin. And I've got some really cute uh, little ghost and Halloween, Halloween decorations. So first we're gonna start, and I've also got some walnuts. Love the walnuts on the chocolate. So I'm gonna take the core, twist it off the apple, and I've got several different sticks. So let's try our witch's broom stick. Found these at our local store. How cute. Oh, and I like using the green apples. You just get that sour taste with all the sweet. So I think it's a perfect com combination. So let's start in the chocolate. We're just gonna dunk it down there and I keep my spoon just to cover as much as that as we can. And the reason why I've got it in my little crock pot warmer, it's cause it needs to stay hot or it will, it will harden up on you. So, and then we're gonna twirl them while we're in here, the excess off, and then we're gonna lay it Gets a lot of good chocolate on there. And you can double dip these too. So we're gonna put him right here on some parchment paper. Kinda of gonna go sideways. We'll grab another one of these. You can put whatever you want on them. So let's do one of these. Try the caramel, which is the best ever. Oh, it smells so good. Love, love the smell of caramel. Oh, that one's going to be mine right here. Oh, love that, love it. Just kind of swirl some of that excess off, laying down. And you can get as fancy as you want with these. Okay, let's get our candies out. So we've got the caramel. And I kind of want to use these because they are the fall colors and Halloween color, so let's start with uh, caramel, which is the best, traditional. And let's, me, oh, I love that. Mm -mm, that's gonna be a good one too. Twirl it around in there. Oh, who wouldn't want to eat that? Oh, these are gonna be so good. All right, we're gonna put some nuts in this one. Row, row, row. You know what, let's drizzle a little bit of chocolate on it. Just a little bit. There you go. And we're gonna let them cool. Add a few more nuts on that, and they'll stick a little bit better as they cool. Good and messy. So let's get over here and let's do it. get our chili. All 
All right, so I've got all my friends with me. I've got my band here. Got my good friend in my mirror. And it's a taste testing time before my guests arrive for my party. So I've got some chili brewing in my witch's pot. Mmm, looks so, so good. So I'm gonna grab a sandwich, excuse me. Mmm, this is my favorite way to eat chili. Oh my goodness. Mmm, oh. This is so good. Mmm, that pimento cheese is the best ever. Yum. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Gonna have to invite the grandkids over to finish our apples later. And their moms and dads have some chili with me. Mmm. The best meal ever for the first cool day of this autumn season. Oh, I'm so excited. Mmm. Don't love it, love it, love it. One more bite. Mmm. Very good. And we're gonna try our candied apples. Mmm. So let's try our candied apples. Got a knife. This is the best way to have them. And this is how, oh, that, see, that is just beautiful. And this is what I do for my customers. Hit it one more time. <laughs> Funniest thing ever. I just love, love, love Halloween. My mother. Thelma, she was the best party planner, Halloween party. She actually had a Halloween party in the back of the farm, the family farm, there's like a graveyard. Dates back to the late 1600s, maybe even later than that. And she actually had a Halloween haunted house back in four kids. This was for our Sunday school class, our church. My dad was the headless horseman. I remember my Aunt Shirley being popping out of a real grave that kind of had sunk in. My aunts and my uncles, everybody. We, you had to take all the guests, all the kids, all the people, all the way back on a wagon. It was the funnest time ever. So let's try this. Mm. Mm. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining me again today. Thanks for enjoying all my stories, coming into Mammy's Kitchen and looking at all my favorite recipes, listening to me talk about all my favorite people in the world. Love my costume, love dressing up. I've got so much more to bring this season. I can't wait to see you again. Come on back. Thank you. Y'all have a great day. Love you, love you, love you.